Today's not gonna be any sort of project video. It's gonna be kind of like a vlog. I figured I'd take you on a trip to check the bees since I haven't done so in quite a while. I'll show you some of the uh, interesting plants that seem to come out of nowhere during our monsoon season. And we are having one heck of a monsoon this year, as you can tell by all of the grass and weeds that are growing up in my yard. And uh, then maybe I'll touch on some projects. So let's get started. So first things first, those of you who are not familiar with my uh, beekeeping adventures, <laughs> it's just a little project I started a couple of years ago when I had some bees trying to get in the eaves of my house. So I set up a couple of traps, caught them, learned a very little bit about bees, I guess just enough to be dangerous. And I put them in some junky scrap wood beehives and have been kind of caring for them ever since. Although I really check on them probably about maybe every two to four months. Very hands off. I've harvested honey twice and I pretty much just leave them be. So let's go see how they're doing and, uh, <laughs> or even if they're still there. This is my tiny house hive because this is the absolute smallest hive I have. Um, again, this one is probably all full. <laughs> Honestly, I never really uh, do any harvesting um, and I kind of just leave them be so I'm sure the bees are naturally splitting off and doing their things but uh, Again, this is another scrap wood hive. I have a little viewing window. I don't know if the camera will be able to see in there or not But this one's pretty much all full. This is the warrior hive, which has traditionally been my most aggressive hive um, Although they don't seem too bad right now with me just talking I generally never talk when I come by here, but obviously for the camera I am. And this one is my junkie hive, and I actually saw this one about three months ago, and it was all uh, ripped open and empty. Um, all of the combs had bite marks, uh, like from <laughs> a coyote or something. Um, and then uh, wax moths and everything else uh, moved in since then. I'm not sure if they left or if a storm blew the covers off and dis dismantled anything, um, but th ultimately this was a lost uh, hive and you know they, they might have just left and then animals came in after the fact. But I call it my really junky one because it took about 20 minutes to build the whole thing. It's just pieces of plywood and eh, I don't know. <laughs> so I'll probably end up removing this one. This is my fancy top bar hive, which was made out of uh, nothing but scrap wood. But I'm guessing these bees, um, it's not too hot out today. They may be ready to be split or uh, break off, but that is a look. I might lift the top and just see how they're looking inside. So I thought that might happen when I was talking around the beehives. I usually do voiceovers for those kind of shots, the few videos I've done on the bees. Uh, but I kind of figured, ah, I don't want to do that. I'll just give a quick little tour. And they were fine for the most part. But when I uh, started tilting the lid uh, at the very end, I don't know if you could tell, they started getting a little bit angry. Uh, so I just decided to walk away. I had a few guard bees uh, still popping me um, in, in the bee suit uh, veil. Uh, but anyway, let's go <laughs> look at some of the other stuff. Some of you might remember the fruit tree swale project where I built a diversionary berm or swale downslope from my front yard to collect and channel rainwater uh, down towards my fruit trees that are located in my garden. I'll post a link of that video up above. Uh, but before the monsoons, none of that green stuff was there. That was all just kind of dead two or three inch dry grass and stuff that I kept hula hood. But since the monsoons have hit, it has pretty much exploded into a jungle. I think this stuff is like 24 to 36 inches high in some places. And the chickens are just loving going through this, getting bugs and stuff. Uh, but it's just crazy how fast everything grows um, once the monsoon rains hit. Uh, there's a little bit of that up close. 
So it looks like a lot of the prickly pears are just about ready to uh, be harvested. Uh, you can usually tell just by the kind of deep purple color or you can get a stick like this and kind of poke into them and if they poke easy and have a real kind of bright purple flesh like that and are dripping they're just about ready. I think these might maybe go another week or so um, but they could be uh, picked for sure right now. Almost looks like blood. Oof. And ironically, prickly pears on other plants are not even close to being ripe. Uh, I'm not sure why this sometimes happens, but uh, I think it just happens if a certain plant gets stressed or not. But this one, you can see they're all still green and not even close to purple like that last one was. Here's an example of some of the random plants that just seem to come out of nowhere during our monsoon season. This is some sort of purple flower. Um, as well as another little plant down here that is putting out orange flowers. I'm not sure what kinds they are, but I can tell you about two and a half weeks ago when I walked across this area, this definitely did not exist. Another plant that really shows its beauty this time of year is the Ocotillo. Uh, most of the year these just look like big long dead sticks with uh, little thorns or spines sticking out of them. But during the monsoon season, they leaf out and just look really beautiful. They have orange and red flowers up top. And most of them are probably like 10 to 12 or maybe 15 feet high. But I'm going to take you to see the one on the back side of my property that I think actually could be the biggest in the world. Probably isn't, but it's pretty darn impressive if you've ever seen a normal Ocotillo like this. Out behind the greenhouse, my wife made a pretty cool discovery the other day. We found a squash plant growing amidst all this prickly pear cactus just in the middle of the desert. I uh, wasn't sure quite how it got here, but then I noticed a little hole back there, and I'm guessing uh, this was brought here by a pack rat when he was collecting his food. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty cool. This wasn't here about three weeks ago before the monsoon started, so I definitely want to try to save the seeds if this ends up fruiting, uh, because I think that's a, a pretty good strain to keep on hand. And one of my favorite plants in the desert is the quail bush. Uh, these things can get up to like, I guess, 15 or 20 feet high. We usually see them about this size, but they're pretty cool because I think it's kind of like the desert's equivalent of an evergreen. It pretty much always stays green, and these are known to be uh, like good fire breaks, although I'm sure if a fire came through, it would probably set it on fire just the same. This is another little plant in the desert that does really well during the monsoons. It kind of comes out of nowhere. It's a little vining squash or gourd, and it has little softball-sized fruit that look like miniature watermelons, although I can tell you it tastes nothing like a watermelon. But it's pretty cool. About three and a half weeks ago, this plant was just a little bud. It was probably about a foot or two in diameter, and now it has uh, vines that are going out 20 feet in all directions just in three weeks. It's pretty cool. Hidden all over the property, we have various types of little clusters of cactus. This is one of my favorite types. Uh, when it flowers, which is a couple of times a year, it has little pinkish purple flowers that come up out of the tops of them. And you'll notice that there's some right there, there, there's one there, there's one over there. And uh, when they flower, you'll just see all these little pinky purple dots all through the grasses, which is uh, pretty cool. And my daughter loves them. And here's a peek at an ongoing project that may become a future video. It's a wildlife water that I've set up with 655 gallon barrels and they feed a little automated water dish. And those barrels are being filled up with a rainwater tarp collector that I have on that hill right there. And it just feeds through a line during the rains. And currently the barrels are pretty much all full. These were barrels I already had on hand. Otherwise I probably would have set this system up with an IBC tote. But for now, it's working well. It's just tied uh, together with simple irrigation fittings. And I plan to eventually kind of dress this up or camouflage it with like an Ocotillo fence or a rock wall or something just so it looks a little bit prettier. Um, and then I do need to make some tops for those barrels. You girls are getting pretty adventurous, huh? Chickens wander farther and farther from the house. Ha, ha, ha.
This is at the tail end of a pretty good rain and the water is still just trickling in uh, after being diverted by that little uh, speed bump right there. Not going super quick, but uh, you can see it's definitely flowing. There's the berm with the fruit trees. Here's the overflow. Running all the way over to that first pond. And that thing has just been overflowing. And this pond is overflowing into that second little pond. I don't know if you can see that water kind of moving. And I'm going to have to turn this off. My camera is getting pretty wet. So that's pretty much it. I hope that wasn't too random. I figured I'd just check on the bees and show you some of the things that grow wildly around here during monsoon season. It's pretty cool time. I'm sure I will have some questions about the bees. Why didn't I smoke them? Why didn't I do this, that, or the other? Um, you know, my only answer to that is I'm just an amateur beekeeper. I've only invested as much as a smoker and a bee uh, jacket into it. And I'm not really looking at uh, getting full uh, production out of these guys. I figured I'd let them do their thing and I'll go rob honey maybe once a year. Uh, but other than that, I'm not going to change a queen or do anything like that. So they definitely are a little bit hot. Most of the feral bees here are Africanized. Uh, not a bad thing. It's just a different type of bee. And then um, some of you might be asking, uh, where's the rainwater footage? I don't know if I'm, I'll include some. Um, there's not a whole lot of footage I have included because the days that it's rained during the day, I've been at work. And the times where it's rained really good here, I've it's been like after dark. So I think I did get one or two clips. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, anyway, guys, um, if you want to check out the current happenings, check out uh, my Instagram. That seems to be the thing I'm posting on more regularly until I can figure out how to uh, get more committed to Facebook and things like that. So as always, I will see you next time. And uh, thanks. <laughs>